I want to agree very, very strongly with something that Mike has said in a piece that he wrote with uh, Paul Avey back in 2014 for the International Studies Quarterly, which is, a, uh, you know, which is where I think he began to uh, set out some of these arguments in public. So he has a lot of quantitative material, much of it making the case that he's just made, but also at the end of that, he has some extremely sound advice for how it is that political scientists ought to communicate better with policymakers. And this advice, I'm sort of more or less a amounts to two things. First of all, use newspapers. Uh, policymakers like newspapers, they find newspapers useful, they find the news media to be as useful a source of information based on Mike's research as they find uh, uh, work uh, done in the classified space in the intelligence community. Second, be short and punchy and direct in what you're saying. Don't be beating around the bush. Don't be hemming and hawing. Instead, present what results you have in ways that are clear and communicable to people who don't have a direct social science training. Now, these are excellent pieces of advice. This is an excellent way to, uh, you know, so to, to think about things. And what I find a little puzzling, I guess, is that this is the kind of advice which uh, we and other people have been engaging with over the last several years. And so I guess I would like to uh, see, and you know, I'm a little puzzled that there wasn't more discussion of this in Mike's book, I would like to see some acknowledgement or some direct conf confrontation of all of the ways which political scientists have been uh, adhering more or less to the kinds of uh, dictums that Mike suggests. And the good news is that I believe that this is working. So, as Stephen uh, mentioned at the beginning, I'm one of the editors at The Monkey Cage, which is a blog at The Washington Post, and uh, we have more or less implemented uh, pretty well exactly the kinds of things that Mike suggests. So first of all, we're a newspaper, or we're part of a newspaper. We have, which is a pretty wonderful deal, more or less carte blanche to publish good political science work for a broader audience under the auspices of the Washington Post, which is, of course, one of the major newspapers of record, and uh, policymakers read us. Policymakers are influenced by us. Policymakers absorb what we have to say, not because we're political scientists, also, I should say, not because we are the monkey cage as such, but because we are publishing under the Washington Post rubric, and that uh, indeed provides us with a cachet, with an ability to reach out to a policy audience that we would not otherwise have. And secondly, we make damn sure that the people who uh, write for us do so in the kind of format that Mike suggests. So in other words, we uh, ruthlessly expunge any uh, political science jargon. And I have to say the quality of political scientists, and this is a subject of personal pain for me, are quite as bad at using incomprehensible jargon as a quantitative social scientists are. We purge this, we force them to write in clear, plain, actionable language, we cut them down so that they can write uh, in a maximum of 1,000 words, we try to get it down to 700 or 800, and this actually does appear to work. If you look at this graph, this is a graph showing the number of political scientists who we have published over the last years. This is up to the end of 2018. Uh, 2018. We're now up to, I think, somewhere north of 3,500 political scientists mm -hmm. who have published material in the monkey cage over the last several years. When you consider that the uh, American Political Science Association as a whole has approximately 11,000 members, that is a very, very substantial percentage of the discipline who we have had the luck to publish. So the other piece of good news, and if you could move on to the second slide here, is that this has consequences. So we've done two rounds of uh, surveys of our, uh, of our contributors, and these surveys have come up with some extremely encouraging uh, reasons to believe that in fact this stuff does work. So if you look at the uh, look at our contributors, over 40% of them say that when they publish pieces in the monkey cage, they have had unsolicited contact from people in the relevant co policy community afterwards. People in those policy communities have wanted to engage with them, have wanted to talk to them. Uh, nearly 50% of people have had further media contact, and people uh, who have written for us also report in large numbers that they believe that this is going to uh, provide them with greater opportunities for talking, for writing, for communicating in 
in non-academic audiences with the public and with policymakers afterwards, and that this is also going to uh, provide them with increased exposure to media. And this also is something that we like very much. And I should say, when I present the monkey cage, this is not just blowing our own horn. Uh, there are many other people who are doing similar things to us. We are one of the most prominent. But one of the things that we do like is that a lot of the people who write for us then go on to write in other forums, in other contexts. They get bitten by the bug and they get and sort of engage in public debate in a way that they haven't done in the past. So this is, I think, an extremely encouraging, uh, extremely encouraging evidence, uh, quantitative evidence, that suggests that this actually works and that in a certain sense, I think, 2014, Mike, is perhaps uh, more accurate, at least in this specific set of recommendations, uh, than 2019. And I think we are really, be we're really seeing some important changes happening. Uh, and there are plenty of anecdotes which I could give on this that I don't have time for. The f so, in other words, I think the reasons why I disagree with Mike are twofold. First of all, because if you look at the evidence, quantitative uh, research, at least as far as we can see, is entirely as of, uh, of as much interest to the uh, broader public as qualitative research is. We see no differences. Once you have uh, put it into an intelligible format, it uh, works just as well. And secondly, we have seen a, a kind of a renaissance over the last number of years in the ability of political scientists to communicate with the broader public and with policymakers and to do work which is policy relevant. And I'd like to close by saying that the reason why I think this is important is because I think that this old debate that we've been having for the last couple of decades is the wrong debate. We're seeing the policy, the way in which policy is made is changing dramatically. Ideas are bubbling up from non-traditional places. The Green New Deal, I think, is a perfect example of that. We need to be thinking about how to engage with these non-traditional uh, forms of policymaking. We also need to engage with a world in which policy expertise within the administration, as well as outside, simply isn't treated in the same way and is in some ways in a city state of intellectual crisis. I think these are the debates we need to be having. This is what we need to be focusing on, rather than just um, sort of concentrating on what is primarily an internal disciplinary fight and externalizing it to a broader set of issues where different logics are operating. Mm -hmm.